pastors and preachers are in their homes laying down before God and getting an anointing and the Lord giving them a strong word and they get to church and they people practice witchcraft on them. If you say that, I ain't gonna pay my tithes. If you say that, I'm leaving this church. If you preach on that, I'm not coming back. But the Holy Ghost said to me, he's about to clear out who ain't he is anyway. You better get yourself together. He said, everybody that's coming to church, it's not God. Oh, my God, 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 the world has crept in. On the way. There's a whole lot of fruit to her account, I'll tell you that. And ain't nobody knows her name. Now, you're not ready. I don't know, can you even get ready? The Bible says, who can abide the devouring flames, the consuming fire? You know this, when Sister Juanita Bynum comes, the fire's going to come. Now, the only difference whether you like it or hate it is what you're made of. Because his fire is the same for everybody. It only depends whether you got a lot of hay, wood, and stubble or whether he's perfecting you like gold in a refiner's fire. So either way, we say, Lord, send the fire. Send your word. Juanita Bynum has graced this platform three times. All three times I have been staggered, amazed at the voice of the Lord through her. I thank God for the price that no one could ever understand that she pays and has paid to develop that anointing to bless us. This is her platform. She can do as she pleases and feels in the Holy Ghost. And I don't care. We don't have another service till Sunday morning. And Brother Donnie McClurkin is going to preach up in this pulpit. Elder Donnie McClurkin is going to preach right here at World Harvest Church Sunday morning. Is, is that all right? It's all right. Well, he's going to anyway. <laughs> right here. And I'm going to sit on the front row and shout. Hallelujah. Would you welcome God's wonderful gift, Sister Juanita Bynum. Why don't you put those same hands together for the Lord? Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. Glory to God. You can be seated. I honor the Lord for his son Jesus. And for all of the people of God that are in this place today, I praise him for yet another opportunity. And I thank him so much for his son and his daughter, Pastor Parsley and his wife. Why don't we give them? Thank you so much. Yes. And so many others that I see in this place, and I don't want to begin to name names because that's how you get in trouble. But I honor the Lord for every ministry gift that is in this house tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, let's see what he's saying. If you would open your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Samuel. If I can get a little bit more reverb and just some more out of these monitors can take a little bit of the bass out of it. To 
Please give me all you can give me. My God. Oh, Jesus. During our time of consecrating before the Lord prior to this meeting, I began to hear him clearly. I was just like Job was when he said, and I looked to my left and I couldn't find him. I looked to my right, I couldn't find him. I went forward and I couldn't perceive him. I went backwards. I just didn't know where he was. But the very next verse said, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. And I believe that there comes a time in our lives where in all of our expertise in ministry, we will hit a place in the Lord where we begin to search for him and we can't find. And sometimes it will appear as if he has gone from us and he's not near us. And if we're not careful, we will be still operating with the same gifts and the same callings. But in the midnight hour where we normally feel him, we can't find him. Isn't this something when you're when you have to keep going because you have a position but you can't find God. <laughs> An awesome thing when you have to keep preaching and keep singing and keep playing the piano and playing the drums but the way you used to know the Lord you don't know him like that. You can't, you can't find the simplicity in just being able to raise your hands up in your own house. And there was a time when just you would whisper Jesus and you would feel the power of God from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet. There was a time when I was driving my car and you would just begin to sing all him and you would just feel the glory of God. Just feel your car. But now we are working for God that we don't even really no because when the Lord begins to move by his spirit he is a progressive God and he begins to change and he begins to switch and he begins to speak and things that he spoke yesterday he's not saying that today and you can be a person that heard him yesterday and can't hear him today and living off of yesterday's word thinking that you know God and God is not even around he's nowhere near you but he said I'm coming to a time now in the end time that I'm putting a seek down on the inside of those that are mine because everybody ain't mine. A lot of people coming but they're not mine. A lot of people dancing and shouting but they're not mine. He said my sheep they know my voice and a stranger huh? meeting the world they will not follow. He said when you're mine It's a very, very, very strange thing. I think that was one of the most powerful things the Lord ever said to me. He said, when they're mine, I speak and they come out. When they're mine, I speak a word. And whatever they're in, they come out. So I began to seek him, asking him because I knew tonight that I could miss. I said, God, I can't. Because, you know, it's beyond uh, 
having an opportunity to stand on a major platform because the greatest part about this whole thing is you're standing before God's people and they're waiting for the next word and they're waiting to hear what it is God is saying. People ain't studying us. Come on, we better understand that. People don't care nothing about you as a person. They just want to know, do you have a word from the Lord? And, and, and so people didn't spend all of their money and all of their time and all of their effort to come here tonight to see me. Of course you didn't come to see me. The Lord said they came to hear a word from me because the times and the seasons are changing. I can feel something as a prophet of God in the atmosphere that I have never felt before. And the thing that I'm feeling the most is that I, it's, it's, it's really unbelievable to me as I watch this thing but it's not so much as the persecution that the church is about to encounter from the world but the church is about to persecute the church Uh there's a split that's coming in the kingdom of God and it's going to be the righteous against the form of godliness that is denying the power thereof and I'm not trying to mess with anybody's uh, whatever you 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 doing but the Holy Ghost said to me that it's time that somebody stood up and called for the righteous because a lot of this junk that we are allowing in the church is not God and he said the church now oh come on here somebody it's time to call the church out of the world call the church out of the world somebody ain't gonna help me say that today but he said he said that to me in the prayer he said call the church out of the world call the church out of the world call church out of the world call the church out of the world call them and I know that I'm not probably going to get a whole lot of a whole lot of amens tonight but I listen 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 there's a charge that the Holy Ghost has put in my belly and he began to say to me it's time to cry out and spare not he said now he said I'm looking for those that are mine but they hid among the mess and the junk that's in the body of Christ you can't hardly tell the world from the church and we all in here dancing and we all in here shouting but God want to know where is my church where is the church that I died for where is the church that I went on the cross for I had somebody to say to me, you are strange. And, and I gotta, you know, I sometimes I find myself trying to explain you to people. And I said, no, I'm not strange. No, 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 no. He said, what's happening is the, listen, the church done got strange and funny on God. No, 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 I'm not strange, honey. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not weird. You know what it is? We haven't gone far enough in God to be purified. Listen, listen, listen. We can't take nobody to their deliverance when we have not been purified ourselves. And it's to the point now. Oh, my God, my God. We're looking at people that are like myself and and you have the audacity to call us strange let me help you with something tonight if you're just impressed with wearing a new suit you won't even get this If you're just impressed because you got connections in the body of Christ, you won't even get this. And one of the reasons why you won't get it because you're here illegally. Oh yeah, come on, come on, we we uh, we gonna go somewhere with this tonight. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because see, see, understand what 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 God is saying about about Dominion Camp Meeting. And, and, and see, I can't get away from this thing, and I'm trying my best to do it like everybody else do it. But God said, understand why you're here, pastors and evangelists and teachers. Understand why you're here. You're here to get the next temperature of God. This is. It's not the place to come and give your card and get connections and behind the room. He said, this is the place to find out what is God saying? What is God doing? Where is God going? What is God going to do next? No, I don't want no music because that's what's wrong now. We're jumping and we're shouting, but where is 
And I'm telling you something, something is happening. Because let me serve notice. The people that are in the pews are no longer going to sit and listen to our dead message. And our warmed up a message. They want a word from the Lord. He said. can say this because I ain't got nothing to lose I'm not trying to get anywhere I'm where I already want to be and that's in the presence of the Lord oh you hear what I'm saying is that about the next door because I don't care if you don't ever invite me but I gotta preach the gospel and I gotta preach holiness and I gotta preach righteousness Israel 30,000 and David arose and went with all the people and were with him from Bela of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims and they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadad that was in Gibeah and Uzzah and Ahio the sons of Abinadad drove the new cart which you look at this foolishness that now it used to be that preachers and evangelists and prophets and pastors and teachers had to be ordained by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And what did he do? He picked his sons to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And they got worse than that. They took it and they put it on a new cart. And sometimes we feel like enough, powerful enough, 
But the word of God was not in the belly of the oxen. So how can you carry something on your back that's not in your spirit? How can, oh, y'all ain't gonna like me tonight, but it's okay. How can, how can you preach a message of deliverance and you're not delivered? How can, how, how, how can, how can you set the captive free and you're not free yourself? You know what we have done? We have put the church on a rocking oxen. Oh yeah, it's on our oxen that is rocking. You know why? Because he said, look at what we've done. Oh yes, uh uh-huh, all over the country, everywhere I go, every place I go to, our conferences are getting better and the presentations are getting better and our television shows are getting grander and all of our churches are getting more beautiful and the choirs are singing more wonderful and the praise and worship teams are, are more awesome than they have ever been. But the Holy Ghost said to me last night, it's all sitting on a rocking oxen. He said, he said, he said, you know why? You know why we, watch this, you know why we take stuff and we try to make stuff look like the glory of God? You know why? See, I can't, I can't, I can't explain this the way God showed it to me. He said, do you know why? We try to take things and make things and make people be the glory of God. He said, because you know what? He said, in order for you to carry the ark of the covenant, you got to go somewhere and purify your spirit. And the church don't want to be purified. Oh, yes. Uh Uh-huh. We want to have church. Let me show you something, brother. Come, can you come? Can you help me? Can you help me? I want everybody in here. I want the music to start up. I want the drums to start up. And I want you to give me some shouting music. And I want everybody in here. I want you to start clapping and dancing. And I want you to begin to praise God. And come on, just start praising God. See, this is what was happening. And they said, wait a minute. He, 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 he's dead. I said, wait a Somebody just died. You know what? You know what David did? He said, wait a minute, God. You want me to take your glory? To your people. But if you're gonna kill people, you gotta show me what was the last time that we as preachers and teachers have stopped and asked the Lord, How do you want me to handle this ministry? What, what? See, see, I understand something. We are so stuck on the people that we have hired. See, in the body of Christ now, everything you do, you got to get a check. You can't sing a song unless we pay you. You won't beat the drums unless we pay you. You won't lead testimony service unless we pay you. And y'all don't like it, and I don't care. But the Holy Ghost told me to bring it down tonight. You won't lead prayer service unless we pay you. You know what? You're not servants. You're people we've hired. will be. So now the body of Christ is being held hostage all over the country by hirelings. What do I mean by that? Because let me ask you something. Who fathered your anointing? Who has mothered your anointing? 
What checker do you have in the spirit that have checked your anointing out? Who have set you down and been a father in the spirit? For you, you know what? We're no longer sons and daughters. We're bastards. We are raising ourselves. We will not submit to anybody. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So if the oil of the anointing it flows from the head down, then where did you get yours? Who gave you that anointing you say you got? Did somebody prophesy to you in the parking lot that don't know your lifestyle? Who have you sat under and got broken before you picked up your Bible and made yourself some cards and said you're going to preach? I don't care how many doors open for you. If God don't send you, you come in. the part of the church that feels like I don't have to pray I don't have to fast 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 fasting for this church in this hour is like a special event we pass our flyers and we say I yearly fast I'm not talking about a yearly fast baby I'm talking about something that God does in your spirit where he can wake you up in the middle of the night and say, don't eat for 10 days. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not talking about these little mamsy pamsy denials where you eat soup and you eat one meal a day. I'm talking about turning your plate down. The Bible said these kind come out. That's why they're not coming out. You can't counsel a devil. You have to cast a devil out. Pastor, can I see you? Pastor, can I have an appointment? Pastor, can I see you? Pastor's list is long. Got a whole line outside of his office full of people that want to be counseled when they need demons to be casted out. And we don't preach like that no more because you know what we've learned to do in the church? We've learned to control our demons. We've learned to master our demons. We've learned how to all oh, y'all ain't gonna talk back in here tonight. And you got people that are practicing witchcraft. You got people that's laying hands on other people and transferring spirits on other people. God help us tonight. And some of us that don't have any discernment got the audacity to look at these people and say, oh honey, she's anointed. She's speaking tongues when she full of Talking about buses. I heard God speak down in my spirit. He said, Go get my church. He said, Go get my people. Because he said, There is a people. Y'all don't want to believe this. But all of us don't want an earring in our nose. All of us don't want our hair purple and green.
Sit down. Sit down. Well, you don't understand, prophetess. We're living in a new day. It ain't like it used to be. So you gotta, you gotta work this thing different than you used to. So then, what are you asking me to do? I want to ask you, what are you asking for me to do? Are you saying to me that I am supposed to, after consecrating and praying and laying before God, but I'm supposed to come to church? I'd sit in my seat and watch people get up on the platform and hunk their bodies and slide like the world. And I'm to say nothing, the devil is a liar. Honey, wait a minute. I didn't live saved. Let me tell y'all something. When I was little and I was growing up, my mother them didn't let us do a lot of stuff. We couldn't wear pants. We couldn't wear hot pants. We couldn't wear makeup. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? And are you saying to me, mama, that out of all them years, that I couldn't do all this stuff, that I end up here, and all I get out the deal is a choir and a praise and worship team? I don't think so. Are you saying to me that I gave up the world to come to church, and all I get is entertainment? I gave up the world. Gave up the world to come in here to the world where our preachers are wearing earrings. Oh, y'all see, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say yes, I'm on TV. Our preachers are wearing earrings. And it's supposed to be a macho thing? No, it's a homosexual thing. Oh, come on, get somebody.
the world. Watch this, that snuck in to the point that the believers are living lives. 70% of us in this place today are professionally schizophrenic because you live one life in church, one life on your job, another life in your home, and the Holy Ghost said it's time to bring all of your personalities together so God can get you free. He said it's only one way. See, I understand what I'm trying to say to you. Sit down, I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished. Y'all mad now? 
You can't switch that pass. You cannot talk in tongues. One minute. And then the very next minute. Say my name, say my name. I ain't, I ain't scared of y'all. I am not scared of y'all. I ain't scared of nobody in here. I'm gonna say it. And if you're a pastor, the Holy Ghost said you better stop preaching the gospel. He said, This is a generation that will not endure sound doctrine. Your belly can't handle a real word from the Lord. That's why everybody has slid to the He gonna bless you message. You want some money? Tap your neighbor. Let's shout. Because the blessing is coming. So what are you going to bless you with money for? So you can be a bigger thief? So you can be a bigger hypocrite? Y'all don't like this tonight. Y'all don't like this tonight. So you can compromise? I thought you left the world. I thought when we got saved, Pastor, they told us that we had to give up the world. And I don't know what's going on. They told me that you had to walk circumspect. Back then, as the word, the power of God was so strong on the elders, you, you wouldn't even think about fornicating and then putting your robe on. You wouldn't even think about playing the lottery and then singing on the praise team. Honey, when you walked in church, you were scared to death. And now I'm so sick and tired of seeing all these programmed mammy pamsy salvations where you say two words and they bring you to the altar and give you a little track. Honey, when I got saved, the mothers laid hands on me and they began to cast the devil out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to know where in the power of God, where is it? anymore and think they delivered we can't just put a little oil and say that's it we can't preach and I keep close no more God start talking to me we can't keep on I keep necklaces and I beautiful earrings when it's time for souls get saved we ain't so conscious. We waiting for our next connection. We waiting for who you gonna introduce me to next so I can get in that door, so I can be the next one, so I can be on TV. Honey, the form of God can get you anywhere you wanna go. The form of God can get you on TV. The form of God can get you on the radio. The form of God can get you in the back room, but the power of God is what keep you there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you ain't got no power, you're not gonna stay there anyway. He said everything that we get, we should get it through prayer and supplication and if you did not get it through prayer and supplication you are illegal he said to me today he said I didn't tell them to put it on the cart he said you go in there tonight and you tell my preachers, and you tell national television, you better go back and ask God how to do this thing. Because see, wait, wait, wait. You trying to grow your church on a new cart, on a rocking oxen, when some of the people that we don't like is the people that's got the power.
y'all ain't gonna y'all ain't gonna say nothing on that. Pastor, they don't want to hear that. Some of the some of the some of the people that we don't care for are people that are anointed. So what we do is we keep inviting our same old friends. We keep being around some of you pastors in here. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to do something in your ministry. And it's time for you to get somebody else. Uh-huh, because see, the anointing bit off your partners. Your best friends ain't got it no more. But then the same old buddies you invite every year, when God want to do a fresh thing, he want to do something else. He want to break up the politics that is in the church. He want to get rid of the mafia. He want to get rid of the Godfather. Y'all ain't going to let me preach it. He want to get rid of the gangsters that are in the gates that are putting hits out on people's lives and their ministries. The devil is a liar. Is that how we do it? You don't like him? Well, let me tell you about him. Now, if I was you, I wouldn't have would. Because let me tell you what I heard about him over there across town. If I was you, I wouldn't have it. And here you are on your face before God. Got a powerful word in your mouth. But the mafia of ministry done got you hit. The good fellas done put a bullet in your head. But God said, I'm raising up a nation. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, I got a brand new people that y'all don't know nothing about. He said, I got some preachers that's on the back side of the desert. I got some evangelists that's on the back side of the desert. I got some singers that you ain't never heard of. I got some preachers that you ain't never heard of. And I'm about to take this thing over. I'm about to upset the kingdom. He said, I don't need you. I got somebody else on the bench. They're waiting to take your place. Let me say this to you. See, when you're playing in the major leagues, coming down the court, it's team ball. But you gotta always remember, God got some people that are benched, that can out preach you, that can out sing you, that can out pastor you. Are you hear what I'm saying? He said, if you're going with me, you better stop tonight and ask the Holy Ghost, how should I carry this thing? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Am I carrying it right? Do I have enough prayer with it? Am I purified? God, show me what you want me to take off. Show me how many hours you want me to pray. I can't go another five unless you show me how you want me to carry this thing because I believe I'm anointed. You gotta show me. You gotta show me how, how to, how to handle it. Because he said, "Touch not my anointed." When I was in prayer the other morning, and I closed with this, and I saw caskets, and I saw caskets, and I said, "God," I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Let me tell you something." I got a people that are trapped with a bunch of pharaohs and I gotta get them out. He said, Peter and John, he start preaching a gospel to the rulers and the leaders of the temple. And they thought they had a monopoly of what God was doing. <laughs> Until, watch this, not in the temple, but outside the church. They saw a man. And the man got healed. Not in the church. See, see, that's why, that's why you got some people that I see y'all all over this place that's just half crazy for God. And you hollering and screaming, and people will know. Well, why don't she sit down? Well, why don't he shut up? Well, why he so wild? No, baby, because I didn't get healed in the church. <laughs> Honey, what I got, I didn't get it from a personality. I got it from God. And I can't shut up. The Bible said he began to leap and dance and run and jump because what I got, you didn't give it to me. 
You know where I got this? I got it from somebody that didn't say to me, step one, step two, step three. I got it from somebody that didn't just send me in the corner, Bishop, and say, go read your Bible. I got it from somebody that said, you want the power of God on you? You want it? You want to be healed? Man that's lame from your mother's womb? You want to be set free? Look at me. Fasten your eyes on me. I am so full of the word to if you look at me, you will get healed. You want, you want deliverance? Let a righteous man and a righteous woman come in your presence. They ain't got to say a word. The Bible said that his shadow. He said all he did was, was just, just, see we play each other down because a lot of y'all looking at me tonight and ain't not my prophet is about it, but somebody see God. And he said, he said, if you can just get close enough, he said the very presence of the Lord that is on that person just causes something to happen in your spirit and you don't even, they don't even have to lay hands on you. Just the fact that they just walk by you and God forbid if they ever decide just to lay hands on you and then God, God forbid if they ever just reach out and go to touch you. God, you know, God forbid the power of God begin to get on them. The God forbid, he said, he said, y'all don't want this, y'all don't want this, y'all don't want this, you don't want this. You don't want it. Do you, how bad do you want it? How, 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 how bad? How bad do you want it? How bad, how bad, how bad do you want it? How bad, how bad, how bad? He said, you ought to be able to just look. He said, Pastor, Pastor Woods, get ready. Gary Oliver, get ready. Brother Donnie, get ready. Brother Donnie, go in that aisle. Go in the closest aisle. He said, because something is going to happen in this place. Y'all talk about want it? No, you don't want it. You can't want it. You too busy being cute to want it. You don't want to mess your suit up. Oh, come on here, somebody. You don't want to break your Rolex. Hey! You don't want to lose your diamond earring. Come on here, church. Is there anybody that want it? See, that's why. That's why in this last hour, you can't say, Pastor Parsley, look on me, and my hair is green. And I got two earrings in each nose. And a bull earring in this nose. And my eyebrow is pierced. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And my arms and my legs are tattooed. And I got a skirt on up to here. You can't look on me and find. He said we ought to be able to get so far back in Christ. Until when they look at us, they don't see us. They see the power of God. Are y'all hearing what God is saying? And the Holy Ghost in this place tonight, he began to tell me, oh yeah, he said to me, he said, it ain't gonna be easy tonight. He said, because you're getting ready to start preaching pure holiness. He said, when you start talking about holiness, it's gonna get quiet. And you know what's gonna happen? Only those that are mine are coming out. Wait a minute. You mad, you ain't his. If you can't receive this, then you ain't his. If you can't digest this, then you ain't his. Oh, I didn't come here to tell you no Bible story. I didn't come here to give you no Bible story. See, once 
watch this. Now y'all may not understand this because you have to understand the giftings and the workings of a prophet. Here we go. Well, I don't see why. Why I got to do that? Well, what difference does it make? Well, see, I understand something. You know what the Holy Ghost said? He said, well, it's time to go to your next level. Do you know why I came in here? I came to go to my next level. He said, he said, well, it's time to go to, see, that's why your warfare is so hard, Pastor Prosty, because you're still holding up that standard of righteousness. And they call us old fashioned. Uh-huh, that's what y'all call me. She's so old fashioned. She's so way back there. Honey, they ain't even doing that no more. Tired to all that stuff that she talking about. But I tell you what, you may not like me. And you may think I'm old fashioned. But you know what I got? I got the anointing. And I'm gonna tell you how I got it. I got it by dying out to God. I got it by sacrificing. I got it by letting God kill me. What did you give up? Since you got say, you look the same, you walk the same, you talk the same, same body gestures, same friends, same records, same CDs. What did you get saved from? You righteous? You ain't righteous. You a hypocrite. You a liar and you a thief. You in here, watch this. You feel this presence in here? This is what we say, watch this, what? It's the anointing. And every time I go to church, I feel the anointing. Well, you know what? One day, Bishop, I went to the car dealership to buy a car. And it was an expensive car, it was a Mercedes. And the man said, get in the car, ride around. Got in the car, rolled around. He said, you like this car? I said, yeah. He said, like the way it handles? I said, yes. He said, you want this car? I said, yes. He said, let's go back to the dealership. Went back to the dealership. I love the car. I love the way it feels. I love the way it drove. I love the way it handled. But when I got back to the dealership, he said, give me the keys. Because until you pay for it, you can't take it home. See, a lot, of, a lot of us today, we came in here to steal the anointing that's in the building. But the reason why when you get back to your house and hell is still there, because you ain't paid the price to take that anointing home. He said, if you want the power, what are you willing to pay for it? Say it! Say it! Say it! What are you willing to pay for it? If you ain't gonna pay up, stop jumping and shouting, and you ain't gonna pay up. You thief, you! You didn't pay for that shout. You didn't pay for them talks. You didn't pay for that praise. You stole it. I hear a little song. I hear a little song. Get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross. Where he shed his blood. You better get right with God. Get right. Get right with God. See, you know why? You know we can't receive that? You know why we can't see that? Because it ain't. Yeah, funky, funky, hey, yeah, funky, funky, hey. The 
as soon as you start singing an old praise that God done gave her old church mother while she was on a 50 day fast you can't hardly receive that because your spirit is far away from God say it say it say it get right with God and do it now Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross. Where he shed his blood. Get right with God. Get right. Get right with God. Breathe. Hold me. Let it breathe. I hear the church coming up out of here. I hear God's church coming. Let it breathe. Hold me. Let it breathe. Hold me. Let the breath. Hold me. Church coming. seconds the Holy Ghost said this place is getting ready to turn into a big car wash I know y'all came to camp meeting for one thing but is there anybody here want to be washed tonight is there anybody here that want to be washed tonight See, what's going to happen is some of y'all pastors is going back with another charge. See, we said we want revival in our churches. But do you know how 5,000 was converted? Persecution. When Peter and John started preaching holiness, when the persecution hit them for what they were preaching, then God added to the church. Here we talk about, well, I ain't gonna say that because, so you don't wanna hurt people. You don't wanna hurt they feelings. What you wanna do, just let them just come on. And you know what the Bible said? The Bible let us know we can come as we are. But baby, you can't stay as you are. Honey, you've been here five years now. And you still wearing a miniskirt? You've been here five years now? Y'all ain't saying nothing here. You mean to tell me you've been in church seven years and we still don't see no change? There ought to be something about your outer appearance that can testify to what God Says anything about you that's testified. 
testifying tonight. Is there anybody that touch your name and ask them that? Tell them to come to the next person. Turn around and ask somebody else. Is there anything about you that's testifying tonight? Something getting ready to happen in here. Just turn around and grab one person. And tell them I'm getting ready to give God a real yes. Oh, come on, tell to grab somebody. They say, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, I may fall on you. I may start running. But I'm getting ready to give God a real yes. Everybody in here, start telling God yes. Start telling God yes. In that center aisle. Bishop, can you turn around and face that way? In that center aisle over there. Right here in the striped suit. Pastor Woods, can you come over here? Matter of fact, y'all can't see him. Y'all come up here. Come stand on that first ledge. Bishop, come stand on that first ledge. Pastor, stand, stand on this first ledge over here. Down stand right there. And God said, this is a corporate power. And something getting ready to hit this building. He said, when these men of God stretch their hands out over in your section, under the bush, he said, I'm going to break demon spirits. I'm going to hold my shoulder of the He said, the enemy's tactic is going to be broken. He said, the power of God can really hit this place. And this is how I want you to do it. I want you to make up your mind right now that you ain't going to stop telling God yes until you feel fire in your belly. You ain't going to let your neighbor stop you. You ain't going to let your earring stop you. You ain't going to let your outfit stop you. You ain't going to let your head stop you. Ain't nothing going to stop you. Now, if you don't want this, you sit down. But God said, I promise you, when they stretch their hands up, he said, fire, like it was in the upper room, is going to sit on top of every last one of us. And whether or not that fire get in your belly, it's going to be whether or not you tell God yes. All back there in them bleachers, some of y'all may fall out of the power of God. He said, but begin to holler as loud as you can until you feel A wave is coming. A wave is coming in television. Right there in your living room. Right there in your... He called on the Two. Hold on the 
Grab one neighbor. Grab one neighbor. You don't know what's getting ready to happen across this country when we say this. Grab one neighbor and as loud as you can. You don't know what's getting ready to happen to America, to churches across this nation. You don't know what's getting ready to happen to gospel singers everywhere, to pastors everywhere, to preachers everywhere, to evangelists everywhere, to praise and worship leaders, to choir members. Grab a neighbor and look at them in their face. And if you don't mean it, don't say it. Say neighbor!
to say it like God has given it to me. Turn around and look at your neighbor. And this right here is showing sure us the power of God because I feel it. Look at your neighbor. Donnie, and tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I decree it to be so that the foundation of your salvation shall not be built on a rock and oxen. But tell them, son, neighbor, upon this rock, meaning you, he shall build the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the to go. But I don't know about y'all, but I feel the church. I feel the church coming. I think I see the church. Am I mistaken? I think I see a church. If you're the church of the living God, if your body is the temple, the Holy Ghost and there is no compromise break out and go to shop and give him a holler live it. Holiness is the only way if I don't live it. Holiness is the real gospel. Y'all ain't saying nothing. In your Bible study, you better preach holiness. In your prayer meeting, you better preach holiness. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He said holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lay your hands on yourself and say, Self, you're going to be holy. Oh, y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. God said it's time to declare war on yourself. It's time to get in a battle for yourself. Lay your hands and say it out loud. Say, Self, you're going to live. Some of y'all don't believe this, but you're going to go home and you're going to look in your closet. As for me and my house, we shall serve the true and the living God. all over this building. I feel God anointing every last one of us with a look on me ministry. I feel the Holy Ghost changing your countenance by this time Monday morning when you get back on your job they're going to look at your countenance and say what happened to you but you better tell them I found out that I may be in this world but I'm not of this world, for I am the righteous, I am the redeemed. Are you ashamed? For the Bible said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
but it is the power of God unto salvation. I don't know if you've noticed, but let me just let you in on the secret. Everybody is going back to church. I don't know if y'all noticed it or not, but sinners is trying to find their way to church. And the saints is trying to find their way into the world. I don't know if you notice or not, but it's church time. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's old time church time. I don't mean just Tuesday night Bible study and Sunday morning church. I mean Tuesday night Bible study, Wednesday night prayer meeting, Thursday night consecration service, Friday night deliverance service, Saturday afternoon noonday church, Sunday morning early morning prayer, Sunday afternoon the first service, Sunday night the second service, Monday night is a prayer meeting, Tuesday night is Bible study, y'all ain't saying nothing, you better get used to it baby, your job is to go to church, your assignment is to go to church, I don't know if you know this or not, but you are a church person, you are not Whitney Houston, you are not you are not Tony Braxton. You are not a part-time saint. You are a full-time righteous person. Your life is church. Your assignment is church. You live to go to church. When you get home, you pulling out church clothes for the next church service. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. What do you mean we in church too long? You know why we in church longer than anybody else? Because we gonna have more than anybody else. Are you hearing what God is saying? Church has got to be your everything. You gotta breathe God. You gotta sleep God. You gotta wake up in the middle of the night, stumbling your way to the bathroom, saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. You gotta be brushing your teeth, saying, Oh, no, 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 you gotta be putting your clothes on. Tamaye. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You gotta get in the traffic and say, Hallelujah. God, I give you the praise. You gotta look over at the neighbor and give him a smile because the Holy Ghost is in your car. You gotta get on your job, skipping around the office. And every now and then, you gotta take a praise break to the bathroom and get inside of a stall and shanda la maka santa la mahaya and steal you a shelter because church is your livelihood. Church is your way out. Church is your life. Say it! I gotta go. I gotta quit. I see a blaze. I see a blaze. Do you know what the top of a candle look like? You. Lift your hands up. You know, you know, pastor right here. You know what the type of a candle looks like? I see a thing standing in your pulpit right now. And it's about eight feet tall and it's shaped like the flame of a top of a candle. This is your pulpit. And I see that tall flame. It's about eight feet tall and it's rocking like this, like somebody's blowing it. It's moving like that. And the Holy Ghost said, it is a flame that he has been holding back, that he has wanted to break out in that city. And the Holy Ghost said, when you get back home and you step in your pulpit, you're going to step in this He said, a revival that you're going to run is going to ignite your people. I see a big crusade. I see a fire starting with you. The Holy Ghost said the flame is waiting for you. It's waiting for you when you get back home. 
is already standing in your pulpit. He said, you don't have to fast for this one. You don't have to pray for this one. He said, it was predestined. It was in my will for you when you were in your mother's womb. He said, your season have come for the fire. He said, your season have come for the flame. And he said, my son, be not afraid of it. He said, for heal on the Lamoshaya, for sick bodies shall be healed. And that healing anointing that's been suppressed on the inside of you, it shall come forth. And you shall prophesy like you've never prophesied before. And your people shall look at you and say, what has happened to pastor? And I hear you screaming, get out of my way! Because the fire is here. If you don't want the fire, get out of my way. Somebody begin to shout for this man of God. Lord yes Lord yes Holy Ghost yes pastors raise your hands evangelists raise your hands yes God you done started something in here he said right now if you a pastor you an evangelist this ain't no joke, I see this for real. He said, you talking about fire from camp meeting? I double dare any pastor in this place tonight, any evangelist, I double dare you to jump out in that aisle. Because when you get out there, watch this. I see all these torches standing all over this place. He said, jump in one. If you a pastor, jump in one. Oh, by shut up. 